Hello, what's up YouTube photographer Ronix with Anatria and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can easily retain skin texture every single time you're using frequency separation within Photoshop. So this is a tutorial that is going to help most of you struggling with retaining your natural and original skin texture in your images. And if I told this is the issue that you have always come across when it comes to retouching your images, make it a point that you hit the like button on this video so that YouTube can push and recommend this video to many people out there so this is the image that we're going to be using and we want to understand every single basic thing about how frequency separation is going to work for this very image so i'm just going to come right here and create a copy from the background layer so basically frequency separation divides the image into two layers so just come to the background layer and simply press ctrl or command j twice then if at all you have an action we are going to be finding you later on in this tutorial so after doing that, we're just going to rename this to low frequency. And we're going to name the upper layer into high frequency. So the low frequency layer is going to contain the colors. And the high frequency layer is going to contain the textures. So after doing this, just come to the low frequency layer and turn this off. So usually when you have a Photoshop action, it stops at the point. However much you may not see it. It stops at the point when it selects the low frequency layer and it lets you determine the amount of Gaussian blur you want to apply to your image. So remember, the amount of Gaussian blur you apply to the image is going to be the major determinant factor for the final skin texture for your image. So we have selected the low frequency layer. So basically, we come to filter, blur, and come to Gaussian blur. So your action usually stops at this very point. So right now we have the Gaussian blur window. So take the radius all the way down. So this is the most important step if at all you want to retain the original skin details or skin texture in your photos. So you, you can start we have these tools. We have the zoom in and the zoom out tool. So this help us to zoom in and look for an area that is going to be a reference point for the rest of the skin. So you have to click and hover around, click and drag until when you see that point that has prominent textures in the image or in the skin area. So when you select that area, come to the radius. So remember the radius I may be using for this tutorial may be different from the one you may have to apply to your image. Remember, people usually have a varying or a differing amount of skin details or skin texture and also the cameras taken and the lighting conditions in which an image is taken is going to determine the amount of skin textures that you're going to be remaining with in your image so right now you can see for my image i'm just going to look for this area that has prominent te textures so as you're blurring out the details in this highly textured area and we have started losing out on these details in the skin it means that the final or the other textures in the image are going to be lost out already so at the point when we start losing out this it means that the other less textured areas are already going to be blurred out in the image so what i mean i'm just going to left click and start dragging so you left click and start dragging as you're looking at this preview window so you have to take up the radius so you left click and start dragging this slider just like that so like i said you left cl click and keep on looking in the preview and also on the image so just start taking that up and stop at the point when the textures are just starting to disappear from the image so at around six that is when these prominent textures are just starting to disappear from the image so you have to stop at that point when the textures are just starting to disappear from the image and simply hit ok so if at all you have an action it just stops at deep at this point if at all the action was recorded well and you simply determine the radius and simply hit ok and the action is going to continue running but if at all you don't have a photoshop action you're just going to continue and proceed so you select the high frequency layer and simply activate it then come to image and come down to apply image so when you come to apply image simply Come and select the low frequency layer. So if at all you have a 16-bit image, the blend mode is going to be add, and the channel has to be RGB. 
or pass at 100 percent preserve transparency and mask cannot check the scale is two and offset so you can make sure you turn on the invert option and with the preview option turned on you can see the textures on the gray kind of layer but if at all you have an 8-bit image make sure the invert option is not turned on the channel is rgb and the blend mode has to be subtract the scale is two and offset 128 or pass at 100 percent preserve transparency and mask cannot check the scale is 2 and offset 128 make sure the invert option is not turned on and simply click ok so i have a 16 bit image right here you can see i have 16 so make sure the blend mode is going to be add and the scale is to offset so and turn on the invert option for a 16 bit image and simply click ok so we want a blend mode that is going to reveal back the information in the image that blend mode, the blend mode is going to be linear light so after doing this, if at all you have the action, it is going to automatically create this for you. And all you have to do is simply determine the amount of gush and blur. Then you can purchase my actions for skin retouching by checking the links in the description to purchase my retouching essentials pack actions. So I'm just going to come and click on both layers and press Ctrl Command G on the keyboard. And I'm going to rename this to Frequency separation so i'm just going to open up this and as you're retouching we simply select the low frequency layer and i prefer to hide the high frequency layer and simply get the tool that i prefer to use to retouch that is the mixer brush tool so right click under the brushes and simply select the mixer brush tool and with that the settings i use hardness at zero clean brush is selected right here option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke is also selected the weight of 9%, the load of 75, the mix at 90, and the flow of 100%. Make sure sample all layers is not checked. So you may find different settings. So whichever settings that work best for your mixer brush tool, you can go and follow those settings for your images. So some people prefer to use 30 or through, but I prefer to use 9, 75, 90, 100. So make sure sample all layers is not checked because when you check this option, it means that the brush is going to copy information from the high frequency layer and paste the information in the low frequency layer, which we don't want remember we only want to deal with the colors in the low frequency layer and with this done as you're retouching make sure you're retouching at a distance and how to use the mixer brush tool you re you increase on the size or play around with different sizes of the mixer brush tool by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard so how to use the mixer brush tool you simply left click and start mixing colors that are looking alike so that you can create a nice and even transition so the trick about using this technique for turning on the texture layer is because we don't want the textures in the image to distract us as we're trying to blend or even out the transitions within the skin tones or skin color so you mix colors that are looking alike and reduce on the size if at all you're mixing a color that is or where a color is blending from one area to another and you have to take a mixer brush tool in the direction of how a given area is shaped and you can see this looks okay it looks great so i'll mix this highlight alone right there and where it is transitioning from one area to another i'm just going to mix that area so that i can blend and create a nice and smooth transition so i'm just going to come and turn on the texture layer and you can see i've retained the ori original skin textures within the image and if i told i turn this on and off you can see that i've worked on the colors but the textures are still intact you can say before after before after then after blending the skin tone transitions you can get the clone stamp tool and do the cleanup and remove the blemishes and you're going to be having a retouch image that looks great at the end of it also this is it for this tutorial and if at all you have learned something you don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed yet to this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching i'll see you yet more amazing trolls and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating